UBC as part of an ambitious project involving instructors, staff and talking squirrels, we are developing videos to help you with your writing skills. Because communicating science effectively is an incredibly important part of being a good scientist. Grammar Squirrel is finishing off a piece of science writing, in which she's reviewing a complex journal article as part of an assignment. She really wants her work to grab attention and sound scholarly and scientific, and she thinks that using complex English and intellectual sciencey sounding words will help. She concludes her piece with what she hopes is a real bang. She says, Notwithstanding the questionable gravity of the author's nuanced application of the neonicotinoid pesticide, his analysis suggests it will nevertheless improve deserous suppression of non-endemic species. And she hands in her assignment, expecting to receive an impressive grade. Two weeks later, Grammar Squirrel eagerly grabs her marked paper. But things haven't turned out quite as she had hoped, or expected. Grammar Squirrel reads the comments closely. Her teacher says she needs to work on four things. She needs to write more succinctly, use simpler language, remove or explain technical jargon, and look out for redundant words in her writing. Firstly, an upset and angry Grammar Squirrel takes some time to cool off and relax a little bit, just to make sure that her mind is clear and that her perspective is realistic before she revisits her assignment. Where did I go wrong, she wonders, as lots of questions pop into her head. With her focus regained, she decides to see a couple of experts to help her understand where she did go wrong. One of the most common misconceptions about writing, especially science writing, is that you have to use complicated, intellectual sounding words in order to impress the reader. In fact, the opposite is true. Being an effective communicator means that you are able to very clearly explain information to your audience. Writing lengthy, complicated sentences that use fancy words often just shows that you know how to use a thesaurus, and not that you understood what you were writing about. Think of it this way. Why use 10 words to explain something when you could simply use 5? Why try to elucidate or illuminate a concept when you could simply explain it? The good news is that you will make your sentences more succinct just by limiting your use of fancy words and phrases. But to be sure that you are not using too many words, pay special attention to your descriptions and your transitions. For example, why say, despite the fact that, when you can simply use despite by itself to mean the same thing? Well, that all makes sense. So now it's time for Grammar Squirrel to go and see the second expert to find out how she can deal with jargon. Unfortunately, science is one of those subjects where jargon inevitably creeps in, and this can make it very difficult for the reader to interpret. And because of this, I think this is why it's very important as a writer you try to avoid or at least be aware of where jargon comes in. So think of it this way. Uh, when you read a scientific journal, you either really know your stuff or you, you have to look stuff up in a dictionary or do your homework. And ultimately, when you actually write for the public, you kind of want to avoid having to force the reader to do those things. So this is a big part of, you know, sort of thinking of a strategy when dealing with jargon uh, generally. Okay, so let's use an example. Uh, if I were to tell you that most proteins in the body were polymeric, is that a good word to use? What would that mean exactly? If you were to look it up in a dictionary, you would actually find out that it means something to the effect of having multiple units or repeating units. If you're writing a piece and you have a choice of using that word or not, um, it would actually make a lot more sense to just go with the description instead because it's much easier for the reader to get that. It's also worth pointing out that sometimes the jargon in question is, is, is not so much a descriptor kind of word, like a really precise way of describing something. The jargon is actually a concept. And I think it's also useful to realize that sometimes uh, explaining these types of jargon, it's, it's, it's really 
a great idea to use something like a metaphor or, or a sweet analogy that just kind of fits it perfectly. Um, I found that really useful in some of the stuff I've read. Don't forget, however, that sometimes the concept, the jargon, is actually quite important. So, for example, a polymeric is something that comes up over and over again. It's, it's actually probably a good thing to, at some point, refer to it anyway, like actually say polymeric as in this or that. And that way the reader will have something to fall back on as they actually go through the piece. Now, Grandma Squirrel is just wondering how she can eliminate unnecessary words. The easiest way to read your work and sort of take note that you are being as precise as possible with your writing is to look out for redundant words. So, in essence, this is just kind of reading through the sentence and just seeing if, if the sentence was actually stay the same even if you take certain words out. So, a couple good examples are phrases like entirely unique or might potentially. If you think about a phrase like entirely unique, there's redundancy there because something is either unique or it isn't. And with might potentially, those two words, the might and the potentially, actually have a similar meaning. So again, you can do away with one of those words. So taken together, if you do avoid jargon and sort of look out for redundancy, as well as just write more succinctly and just in a more simple way, uh, your writing just stands to improve overall. Grammar Squirrel. Fresh from her trip to see the experts, rereads her assignment. And when she gets to her concluding statement, she realizes where she went wrong and rewrites the same sentence to address the four points of her writing that she was advised to consider. Doesn't her conclusion sound better now she simply says, the difference in the way the author applied the pesticide was only small, but it should help stop non-native species spreading. And, having gained this valuable new perspective, she's really looking forward to her next essay.